Scream 6 was almost great. Today I'm going to be spoiling the hell out of Scream 6, so if you don't want to see any spoilers, make sure you click away from the video. Or just watch it now. I don't really care. It's up to you. Alright, so I've seen Scream 6 twice at this point. I was really excited for it. Pretty much the most hyped I've been for a horror movie ever since Halloween Ends came out. Mainly because of the trailer that had Ghostface shooting someone point blank in a bodega with a shotgun. I never really talked about it here on the channel, I don't think, but if you follow me over on Twitter, you've probably seen that I wasn't the biggest fan of Scream 5. I thought it was solid as far as requels go and it did give me those warm nostalgic feelings seeing Ghostface chasing Sid, Dewey, and Gale plus this new cast all through Woodsboro but the thing that really bugged me about it from start to finish like every time I saw it was that it kept telling me this Ghostface was something different but by the end of the movie it just felt like the same old Ghostface. And honestly that's not really the worst thing in the world it really just left me feeling underwhelmed when it was all said and done. And that was pretty disappointing for me because I built that movie up going into it mainly because Radio Silence was was the team behind it. And I had been a fan of them for about a decade, ever since I saw the first VHS and watched it like a hundred times in college on Netflix. But look, whenever you're talking about any of these legacy sequelized franchises, whether it's Scream, Child's Play, Halloween, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Hellraiser, the big inevitability with all of them is that you really are always going to have too many cooks in the kitchen. And I'm totally fine attributing the fact that Scream 5 played it pretty safe to the fact that the studio probably had a lot of say definitely more say than the creative team behind the movie. I mean, go look at any piece of merchandise from the last three Halloween movies over on Trick or Treat Studio, and you will be shocked at how many studios have their logo on the packaging. So knowing that, going into Scream 6, I wasn't any less excited about it than I was for Scream 5, and then my hype just kept ramping up, starting with when I heard that it was going to focus on the main four characters from Scream 5 instead of the legacy sequel characters. And I know that really came down to a payment dispute with Nev Campbell, and she'll probably be back for seven, but but it was nice to see this movie focusing on the new characters because I think they're all pretty cool. And then the rumors started swirling that this movie was going to take place in New York. And look, I was born in 1993. I lived through the era where every movie basically had a gimmick that it was set in New York City. I mean, Home Alone 2, one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. So hearing that Scream, a slasher franchise, was going to be set in New York, I was absolutely stoked. And most importantly, they were filming it in New York. I like Jason Takes Manhattan. I think I'm like the only person out there, but you could really feel that it was not shot in New York. And then I heard that my favorite side character in the franchise Kirby was coming back and then things just exploded when I saw that footage of Ghostface once again shooting someone point blank with a shotgun in a bodega and it wasn't lit like a movie. It was lit like a bodega. It was awesome. That was the first shot. The first time in these two new movies, five and six, I saw something that made me feel like this Ghostface was something different. This video is sponsored by Athletic Greens and their AG1 nutritional drink. Athletic Greens AG1 is comprehensive, all-in-one foundational nutrition that fits into any busy schedule, like mine. I have a bunch of YouTube channels, I gotta drive all the way out here to the office, which is like an hour away, I go to the gym six days a week, so fitting this into my schedule was incredibly simple. I've been generally trying to be healthier this year, so thankfully this doesn't totally apply to me, but it is lifestyle friendly. So whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, this will fit into your daily life. Basically, it was made with forming a micro habit in mind. It's one scoop, one minute, once a day, every day. First of all, it contains dairy-free probiotics that protect your gut, plus it has naturally occurring enzymes that improve the digestive process. I learned the hard way that natural immunity basically is formed in your gut. So having AG1's two hero probiotics probiotics to promote diversity in my microbiome basically made my gut thrive and it made my day-to-day -day life a little bit better. It also supports energy and endurance and brain health. It's basically like the best thing ever. So if you want to try Athletic Greens AG1, tap the link in my description and you'll get a one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3K2 and five travel packs free with your first purchase. You can't put a price tag on your own health. Huge shout out to Athletic Greens AG1 for sponsoring this video. I genuinely don't know why, but people don't like when slasher villains use guns in these movies. I guess it makes them a little bit more OP than they already are. But for me, seeing Ghostface recreate the Velociraptor scene in the kitchen in Jurassic Park, one of my all time favorite movies pretty much ever. Yeah, that was really cool. And it got me extremely excited to see this movie. So yeah, I would say my hype was matched for about three fourths of the movie. I was literally sitting there like, damn, this might be the best screen movie since the original. And of course I gotta say, but here, the reveal of the killer 
colors was really where it started to fall off for me, but I'm gonna talk about that more in a little bit because I wanna start with everything I loved about this movie. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you've definitely heard me say that I am firmly in the camp when it comes to slasher movies that wants to see a scary dude in a scary mask chasing people around with weapons and killing them whether they deserve it or not. Usually they don't deserve it and it's a movie, it's fine with me. I like creative killing in movies. That really stems from two things that happened in my life. The first one being my mom taking me when I was a little kid to Sam Goody and I got to see this wall of Halloween masks. Stuff from like Halloween, Hellraiser, Scream, Friday the 13th, you name it, they had a mask for it and it was awesome. I was obsessed. I built these characters up in my mind, I came up with my own lore for them and then later on, this is the second factor, uh, I found out that they were from movies which was great because my mom let me watch AMC Fear Fest which of course you guys already know, it basically limited what I was aware of in terms of slasher villains because I was limited to what they were showing, stuff like Halloween, Friday the 13th, Child's Play, and then there were some random movies thrown in the mix as well, like Leprechaun. I'm gonna be real with you guys for a second. I was Ghostface for Halloween in fifth grade, and at that point, I didn't know what Scream was. That costume was sick though. It came with a mask that had a hose attached to it, and you would put it through the costume down the arm, and it had a human heart at the end, and when you would squeeze that, blood would flow down the mask, and it actually worked, and my mom also got me a combat knife, like a Ghostface themed one, that had blood inside of it, and I'm pretty sure I still have that at my house back in Michigan. I wore that costume to school. The 90s were definitely a different time. I'm saying thankfully here for a reason. I didn't get to see Scream until I was in high school. My friends and I binged all the movies leading up to Scream 4, and I was one of the few people who saw Scream 4 in theaters, and I guess one of the people who originally loved it, because man, I remember people saying they hated Scream 4 for like a decade, and then when Scream 5 was coming out, then suddenly everyone loved Scream 4, but I was always an OG Scream 4 fan. It had an excellent setup, an excellent killer, and disappointing fan turnout. I can say that I was there. But now knowing my history with slasher villains, I think it's pretty easy to see why I love the movies I love, whether it's Halloween, Evil Dead 2, Freddy vs. Jason, House of a Thousand Corpses, and movies I like but really want to love, like Bodies, 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 X, Midsummer. you know, I hate this term, but elevated horror. It sucks that you know what I'm talking about when I say that, but it's the stuff that focuses on characters versus killers. Scream has always been right there in the middle. I like the melodramatic high school plots that come from Kevin Williamson and now Guy Busick and James Vanderbilt, but what I love in those movies is the guy in a Halloween mask with a voice changer and a combat knife chasing people around a California town and gutting them. The issue I've always had with Scream though is that no matter which of these movies you pick from, from the best killers like Billy and Stu all the way down to the worst killer, which is Roman Bridger, I'm just always disappointed the second the mask comes off. And guys, six movies in, I really felt that weighing on me when the killers were revealed in Scream 6. As far as the motive goes, I think it works as well as it did in Scream 2, but I don't think it lives up to the idea of someone constructing a literal ghost face museum in an abandoned movie theater in New York City. Like if we're being real, I wish Richie was the killer in this movie instead of 5. And honestly, I gotta believe that there was a much cooler motive and even killer in the first draft of this script that included Sydney. Because that type of killer would have a great dual motive of wanting to kill Sydney but also frame Sam, and you can see breadcrumbs of a plot like that spread all throughout this movie, starting with Sam's driver's license being found at the intro kill scene. Regardless, the feeling that the reveal gave me the first time I saw this was really that's it, but then the more I thought about it over the past couple weeks, the more I realized that this still is one of the best Scream movies. I already mentioned the Ghostface Museum and the Bodega Kill, which honestly are like two of my favorite things in the entire franchise, but on top of that, the scene where Ghostface is shaking the ladder to make Annika fall to her death after stabbing her in the gut, he's like literally terrorizing her, that was absolutely incredible, and it totally fed into this idea that I have that this Ghostface actually finally feels like something different. The subway scene was also absolutely phenomenal, and I'm not just saying that because of the person wearing the stock Michael Myers Trick or Treat Studios mask, I promise guys. When I was editing for Austin Evans, we used to go to New York all the time for work because they showed off a lot of tech products there, and we rode the subway a bunch, and I will tell you that that set felt absolutely true to life. It was dingy, it was dirty, it felt like a New York subway, and I thought it was awesome that they messed around with the flickering lights as you would travel between tunnels, because that's totally a real thing, and it was super clever and super scary in the movie. I guess you can kind of knock the fact that nobody saw Mindy getting stabbed in the subway because of the horror theme setting, because again, just like the motive of the killer, that's taken directly out of Scream 2, but because it was so cool and well-directed, I'm not throwing any shade at that kill. And next, people seem to be 50-50 on whether it's cool or cringe to see Billy talking to Sam in glass surfaces. In Scream 5, I definitely was leaning towards cringe, but now 
seeing it in Scream 6 and it becoming like Sam's defining character trait, along with her just brutally stabbing people a hundred times, I am definitely leaning more towards the cool side of the slider, but I'm still more towards the middle. I can't decide. In its defense, it fits the tone of the franchise perfectly, and I don't think you could really argue with how cool it was to see him in the glass of the display case that was holding the original Ghostface costume with the knife. I just thought that was really cool and thematic, and it it scratched that nostalgic itch, you know? It, it got me. It got me really good. The thing I really can't forgive with this movie that's been bugging me for over a week now is that Chad, Mindy, and Gail, Chad especially, all took mortal wounds and all three of them got to survive this movie. Like, really? I personally don't think Dewey's death was earned at all in Scream 5. Every time I watch it, it just pisses me off more. So to have that knife dug in deep even further in this movie, letting Gail live through what she went through, and even Chad, I guess, like, come on. There's, there's no justification for that outside of maybe, maybe the studio telling them they had to let all these characters live. Like, that was ridiculous. I never talk about this here on the channel for obvious reasons, but I like rom-coms. I like cheesy, romantic stuff like that, and I wanted Chad to live because, you know, I like the romance arc between him and Tara, but when Mindy runs up to everyone at the end of the movie after having her guts opened up on the subway, and then they wheel Chad out, like, I cracked the f*** up, and I looked at the guy next to me, and he was sitting there, like, with his hand over his mouth. You just, like, you cannot sell me on that being cool at all. Like, the dude is f***ing immortal. I'm just gonna choose to see it as an apology for killing off Randy in Scream 2, but unfortunately for you, Radio Silence, I will never forgive anybody for allowing that to happen. It absolutely reeked of being a studio call where they wanted to have everyone around in Scream 7 just in case Nev Campbell doesn't come back, but, you know, if this is the trade-off I have to make to get a more brutal ghost face where we actually see the knife twisting around in people's stomachs that make me go like, ugh, that's a lot for me even, I will take that trade, I guess. And finally, I guess I should have put this in the video earlier, but whatever, I like how it turned the classic Scream intro on its head, like seeing Ghostface take his mask off after the first kill was shocking for a second, and I guess that idea, you could also say like the idea of making it more shocking by twisting it all around, that's something you could attribute to Scream 2, but I, it's, the, it's the last time I'll mention Scream 2, I promise. The point is Scream 2 is awesome, it's on sale on iTunes right now for like 8 bucks, you should go check it out. I mentioned it a couple times here on the channel, always had a huge crush on Samara Weaving, so getting to see her in a Scream movie was awesome, and then seeing the shock of Ghostface taking his mask off, great, and having it all lead up to an actual dismembered body stuffed inside a refrigerator, that's where this movie hooked me, and thankfully it was in the first scene. Oh, and that just reminded me of the therapist getting stabbed in the face through the door. I'm just really glad that Radio Silence got to show that stuff in this movie. It was like sorely needed as a fan of Scream who wants to see Ghostface committing acts of violence. Sticking with Radio Silence, they did an interview recently where they joked about making a stab movie as a sort of Scream spinoff, and honestly, I really hope that becomes a thing because my biggest problem that I have with the Scream franchise is that I love the core cast so much that I don't really want any of them to die. What I'd really like to see from a stab movie is a slightly immortal ghost face that most importantly is played by Billy or just one person who keeps coming back over and over again to kill Sydney and her friends. Or you could have new characters come in, I don't really care. My whole point is I want a ghost face that travels from movie to movie and it's just one person underneath the mask because that's why I'm scared of Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees and all these characters because they're one person who's built up over a bunch of movies versus a concept of a character which is what Ghostface actually is. It would really just bring the whole franchise full circle by making this slasher character who was built to commentate on something like Michael Myers uh, turn into Michael Myers essentially. And seriously with how much of an afterthought the meta commentary aspect of Scream has become by the sixth movie I think it's totally fine to ignore all the smart takes we're gonna see from film Twitter if this ever becomes an actual thing. I could be way off base there, but regardless, I really enjoyed Scream 6, and I'm honestly a little shocked to see that I like it more than most people seem to. I think it's really gonna grow on me over time too, whereas with Scream 5, I liked it pretty much the first time I saw it, and then every time I watched it since, I like it less and less. I guess what it all comes down to here is that Radio Silence finally delivered on what they promised back when Scream 5 was being developed because they gave us a ghost face that's something different. All right, yeah, so that's my spoiler review of Scream 6. If you're watching at the end, I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're glad to see me back here on this channel. I've been working my ass off on PS Ready and Deck Ready, and I've also been making thumbnails for a lot of other big channels, which you have definitely seen, but I will not tell you which 
ones I've made. You'll just have to go and find them yourself. But the next video after this one is going to be a Friday the 13th update, I think. And then I'm probably going to take a look at the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise and round up the reviews for Evil Dead Rise if people are still talking about that movie by that point. But if you want to see more reviews of other movies, let me know what they are down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. And as always, my name is Jimmy Champagne, and I'll see you in the next one. Shape out.